my name's Adam. Um, I'm actually from Rock Hanford. Uh, we own a crocodile park. Um, I'm here to talk to you about these little lizards that we've got sitting down here. Now this guy is probably, I'd say he'd be about two years old. Two years old? Seven. Seven. Well there you go guys, it shows you what sort of differences. We get that crocs about three years old at this size. If you keep it in sort of a family of tent, you can swim them down a bit. Just being told this is actually seven years old. Okay? And as I said, this is about a three year old crocs now. Uh, now I've left these down to Kate uh, for a very good reason, as you can probably imagine. Uh, a bit of a small enclosure here, so I want to keep myself safe and some miles to Now we do have um, some pretty technical pieces of equipment that we use. The first one here is the high-tech bamboo pole. Okay, this is probably the, the crocodile farmer's greatest friend. Okay, you can control the crocodile with a bamboo pole. I know it sounds a bit, a bit unusual, but they do have some pressure points across the top of the head. Now, I'm not talking about swinging it like on a summer line. Okay, all I'm going to do is place it straight down between the eyes, and you can see there he's already backing off and pulling away. Okay, so it's very easy control to, to have on a, on a reptile of this sort of caliber. Now guys, when we do go to catch these animals, uh, what we'll do is we'll pull out our next piece of high-tech equipment, the PVC pipe, a little bit of telecom rope. Now we don't just tie a noose in this and away we go, we do actually have uh, a certain knot that we do tie. It's what we call our running slip knot. Very simple, put a loop in the, uh, in the rope, straight over itself, or under itself, sorry, and then back through the little loop there. Now what this does is it allows us to have the knot catching against the end of the pole, which will, what it'll do, it'll stop the, uh, the rope slipping down the actual pole itself so that we can tighten that noose. Now the other good feature about this knot is that it's a very safe knot if you're working around reptiles and, and dangerous creatures, because what you can do is once you've actually caught the animal, you can pull on this rope here, whoa, hello feedback, we can pull on this rope here, which is what we call a tag line, and what that will do is actually dissolve the whole knot. Okay, so we don't have to get too close to the crocodile if we don't want. As you can imagine, for something this size here, a metre and a half tag line is fine. When you're working with a five, six, seven metre crocodile, you want to have at least two kilometres. Okay? Don't want to be playing with them. Now when we do catch them, what we do is we try and get the top jaw first. Now the reason for that is that when the, uh, when the noose slips over the top jaw, it will actually stick in against the teeth and the teeth will work in our favour. It will stop the ropes from slipping back out again. Now with this fellow, of course, he is taped up, so I can't get that top jaw. Now what we do, we try and get him straight down and over. And nice and tight. Okay, now from there, we usually get another rope. Come on, buddy. Here it is. Notice now I haven't wrapped the rope around my hands at all. Okay. One quick pull from an animal this size will pretty much cut your hand in half if you have the rope wrapped around it. So never do it. Not that I'm asking you to go and catch crocodiles. But from here we do have a bit of control on the animal. We can push the head down, walk a bit closer to it. And as you can see there, he's more intent on getting that rope off his mouth, not actually uh, you know, attacking me, which is what I want to see. Now from this position, what we'd normally do is we'd drag the cock out to where we've got a nice sort of bit of a grab on him. Come on, get you come out here. Just need to hold up. Thank you. Come on, buddy. Here's your ass. Now from here, guys, what we do is we need to use a hat or a shirt or a hessian bag or something. We straighten the crop out, throw it over the top, and then we do what we call the jump, which is just simply straight there, up over the top of the legs, as you can see here, try and push them in behind so they can't push off anything. And from there, that animal's subdued. Okay, all we do then, take the jaws, zippy time if we have to, if it's a larger crocodile, and then we can move him around wherever we have to. Now guys, I'm assuming most people have already had a bit of a play and a pad of this one. He's been out and about and having a bit of a play. So if you want to have a feel, guys, we'll drag him back out. Okay, you can have a bit of a pat, feel what the legs are like. By all means, come on over to our stall as well. Have a look at the smaller ones because you'll actually notice, no matter what the size, the only part that changes on the crocodile is along the back. There is bone in every single one of these scales across the back. And by the time they hit about four and a half to five metres, that bone literally becomes bulletproof. 
We have got video footage of shotgun pellets bouncing off the tops of large crocodiles. Now guys, pretty much um, that's all I really wanted to do. I wanted to give you a catching demonstration, give you a bit of a talk down of the animal. Um, as you might know or might not know, these animals can grow up to 27, 28 feet. As you can see, this one here has four. But uh, what we'll do, we'll calm him down again. I'll get that rope off his mouth. And this is where my knot fails, of course. Yes. All good. Simple release. Very simple. Thank you guys for having a listen to the, uh, to the talk. If you're interested, come over and chat to us over here. Or come and see Tony as well. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. Yeah, it's a bit warm up here.